Hello everyone, I'm Wenjia. Today I'll present our work, A Method for Optimizing a Peak Filter Queries. First, what is a peak filter query? We are familiar with filter queries that select satisfying items. For example, when a user wants to select a student's name whose age is larger than 20, she can write a SQL filter query to complete the task. An important characteristic of such queries is that their semantics can be understood by the optimizer, which then applies appropriate optimizations such as B plus tree. However, if images, videos, or text in the database need to be processed, the simple predicate implemented with math operators is not enough. For example, when a user desires to select students whose hairstyle is curly by classifying their photos, she needs to define a complex classifier in the predicate. This kind of query is called a peak filter query, a query with a selection predicate implemented with a user-defined function. In contrast to simple filter queries, its semantics are unknown to the optimizer, so no traditional optimization can be directly applied to it. Due to its powerful expression ability, the opaque filter query is important for unstructured data in machine learning and data science workloads. For example, select the images containing crosswalk from dashcam image database, select the road where there are more than five cars on average, select a positive review from a review database, and so on. One thing to notice is that limit clauses are common in opaque filter queries, driven by users' requirements. Take the previous query, selecting images containing crosswalk, as an example here. The user may be a self-driving car engineer who only needs 100 examples to debug the car, so she would add the limit clause for downstream processing. This query structure is a common case. Although it's more powerful, as has been mentioned before, no optimization can be directly applied. So real-life query engines use simple scan. The query time is big O n. When we analyze the runtime, we can find that real-life uh, real runtime is large because both n and the constant are large. Here, n is the number of UDF invocations. It's large because large databases are easy to collect from online collections or video applications, and a 30 frame per second camera can obtain more than 2.5 million frames a day. And the constant is dominated by UDF runtime. It's large because UDFs usually contain complex neural network models for challenging tasks, and UDF runtime can reach two seconds per record already. In order to accelerate a peak filter query execution, a desired method needs to meet four key requirements. First, it should work with constantly involving predicates. So the UDF cannot be just applied once and record the answer. And second, it should work with any language and semantics of UDFs. But previous works, Freud and Manmo, are only designed for transact SQL queries, um, transact SQL UDFs, and MapReduce programs. Third, it should work on many data types. But the difference detector component in NoScope is only useful for videos. Fourth, it should avoid the use of online neural network model training like in Blazit, because it's expensive and error-prone. Based on these requirements, we propose our method, Wood Indexing. It's a general and efficient mechanism for optimizing peak filter queries. In this optimization, the specific goal of Wood Indexing is to only process items where the UDF is likely to be true and um, so, so as to avoid wasting time on executing UDF on irrelevant items. To achieve this goal, we've made an important hypothesis that similar data items will yield similar UDF results. Then the optimization is achieved in two steps. At index time, um, group together similar items. At query time, find groups where the UDF returns true very frequently and focus on those groups. Let me use a concrete example to explain the idea. Assume there is a traffic database containing eight images. The goal is to find images that contain crosswalk. At index time, these images are clustered into four groups according to their similarity. Then during query time, we hope Voodoo indexing focuses on the first and the second group, especially the first group, because UDF returns true very frequently in these groups. In this way, images in the third and fourth groups can be ignored. 
Motivated by this idea, we designed a two-phase architecture. An indexing stage, raw data is clustered into some index structure, and query processing, um, query processing stage, an item from a cluster is sent to the UDF, and the UDF result is sent back to instruct the next selection until meeting the stopping criteria. Let's go into the details of these two phases. In phase one, similar items are grouped together, and the clustering is used to achieve this goal. We use UDF independent feature um, for clustering, for example, pixel values of images. The general features are associated with a wide range of filter properties, so the data can be indexed prior to queries. And we use off the shelf cluster methods such as k means. In phase two, the goal is to find groups where the UDF returns to very frequently and focus on those groups. However, the problem is how to balance explorations, um, selecting the cluster to identify the best, and exploitation, selecting the cluster currently known to be the best. So it's a kind of multi armed bandit problem. The popular algorithm to solve it is upper confidence bound algorithm. When it's applied in this situation, every group's UCB is calculated and select the cluster with the highest UCB, run the UDF on one of the items in this cluster to decide whether it should be added to the result set. Repeat the loop until meeting the stopping criteria. In the UCB formula, mu a is the average reward of group A and is the number of selections, um, and n a is how many times group A has been selected. This formula contains the exploitation term and the exploration term, and the parameter alpha is used to balance them. This basic method can work, but it ignores a key fact. It assumes the clusters have nothing to do with each other. However, there may be a similarity relationship between clusters. Let's review the previous illustrative example. We can find that group two is closer to group one than others. How can we benefit from this finding? We can use evidence from one cluster to improve our knowledge about other similar clusters so as to accelerate query processing. For example, sampling from the first group can provide strong evidence that there is a crosswalk to the group itself and weak evidence to the second group, but almost zero information to the other two groups. To realize this idea in the indexing stage, in addition to group together similar items by clustering, um, similar groups are connected to construct a hierarchical structure. Still use the previous example, um, groups that are more similar, like the first and second group will be closer in the hierarchy, um, but groups that are less similar will be further apart. So similar groups are sh uh, can share sampling information through high layer groups. In order to utilize the hierarchical structure, we are facing a hierarchical multi omnibanded banded problem. So we design a new algorithm. The main difference between the previous UCB algorithm and this lies in the first two lines in the loop. Calculate the UCB of every inner group and live group and select the cluster by a top-down approach. The top-down approach starts from the root, compares the UCB of its children, and select, uh, select the highest one and repeat it until reaching the bottom. In addition, we've also designed three boot extensions to further improve the performance. First, dynamic index recovery. Reconstruct the hierarchical structure if the original one is not good. Second, scan fill over. If there is not a good policy, switch to scan. Third, batch mode batch load multiple items at once. Welcome to read our paper for more details. About root indexing, there are three core experimental claims. Root indexing performance is better than state-of-the-art methods. All root extensions yield benefits and root indexing is effective across many scenarios. All of them have been demonstrated by experiments. We test on three real-world text and image databases, MNIST, ImageNet, and Yelp. By varying the UDF model and classification target, there are 103 UDFs in total. Here, the information of datasets, UDFs, and index are shown in the table. To demonstrate claim one, we compare Voodoo with Scan and ZombieG, a generalized version of Zombie system which was originally designed for feature engineering. 
The figures show the average required time improvement against the limit fraction for three data sets. These numbers show that our system yields a substantial improvement up to 88% over competing methods for all data sets and limit values. As you expect, the improvement is smaller when the limit value is closer to 100%, as this is um, no opportunity to skip items. Then experiments show that um, three boot extensions, dynamic index recovery, scan fill over, and batch mode can save query runtime. In addition, boot is effective for reasonable UDF runtime and selectivities. Although the clustering is not perfect, the observed performance of MNIST and Yelp is close to what the best clustering might enable. More experiment details can be found in the paper. In addition to the standalone system in the previous experiments, we integrate Spark SQL query processor with boot indexing backend. According to the experiments on MNIST, our system selects fewer items and executes opaque filter queries faster compared to standard Spark SQL when the limit fraction is from 10 to 90%, and it can achieve up to 86% improvement. In summary, we have designed a general and efficient two-phase method for opaque filter query optimization. We model query processing as a hierarchical model on the bandit problem. And we implement the standalone Python system and Spark SQL integrated system. Both of them yield significant speed up. Thank you very much for your attention.